And next up is Tom Hendrickson to give you a little more Jersey City flavor. Tom Hendrickson is a switchboard operator, an erudite blogger, and a descendant of Jersey City bricklayers. Uh, I'm personally grateful to him for making the trip with me to Pit from Pittsburgh this weekend and for helping me fold chat books this morning. just over the Jersey City line in Union City. There's a transfer station right there between the two cities, near clubs with names like the Melody Club and the Zoom Zoom Room. <laughs> My parents refer to this area, the Union City side of the transfer station, as the Barbary Coast. Union City was a place where you could make a bed on a street corner as easy as buying a newspaper, especially during World War II. Me, I was born during the Depression. When I was young, Bert Lancaster was still a waiter at the Melody Club. <laughs> Once you crossed the line into Jersey City, though, it was a very different feel. Mayor Haig maintained an air of civility in his city limits. He had an ordinance that bars had to be eight blocks apart so a red light district wouldn't form. So every eight blocks, you'd have a bar. But there were saloons not clubs, and also the mayor instituted the private sitting room in the back of the bar, a respectable room where men could bring lady friends, you know, wives, civility. Jersey City, when I was growing up, had a very safe atmosphere, in a sense. The streets were safe. This is a place where cops walk the beat in their own neighborhood, Irish cops. Frank, I am the law Hague mayor of Jersey City for 30 years, he and the Irish cops kept the streets safe for the citizens. See, if the cops heard that somebody, an outsider, had tried to rob a home or mug someone in the neighborhood, they'd send their cousins out to work the guy over with mop handles. <laughs> and they'd beat him pretty bad, and then the cops would come along, and then the cousins would scatter, throwing the mop handles under the car. And the outsider would know never to hit the neighborhood again. Only an outsider would even think to attempt this kind of crime. And then only once. So at that time, the streets were very safe. In Jersey City, we had three major operations. We had the Teamsters, we had the Garment Workers, and we had the bookmaking and hijacking. <laughs> at night, you know, a horse whistle. The Teamsters building near the transfer station in Union City was a triangle-shaped building, not unlike the Flatiron building, but it was smaller, about 10 stories high. The Teamsters Union had their offices on the upper floor, and on the lower floors there were sewing machine factories, like a, like a mini garment district. The women working there, mostly Italians, who had immigrated or maybe one generation in, they were already grandmothers. They had the knack of sewing from the old country. And they didn't call them sweatshops because they didn't have to keep the windows closed. Lanonas weren't illegal. The working class once had access to inexpensive quality. The clothes you bought would last forever because they were made of quality material. The suits were cotton in the summer, wool in the winter. There was none of this chemical stuff, these wool blends. Now you have, what, 14% polyester, 10% ugats, 16% I don't know what. I'm looking at the label. I'm saying, what chemical is that? Will I get a rash? I'm getting an anxiety attack. I haven't even put the suit on yet. <laughs> Jersey City and the immediate area was a mix of cultures. Union City, North Bergen were primarily Italian in the 30s, 40s, 50s. Jersey City, German, Polish, Irish, Russian, Jewish. Everyone had grandparents who still spoke the native tongue, and the language would trickle down. And then over, words from other people's house, right, would creep into everybody's vocabulary. Digimon Jat. Everybody knew what that meant. We'd often make fun of the grandparents' accent, our own or the neighbors. We would over-exaggerate for effect. If you, you came out of the bathroom and your mother said, did you make it to Stranza? 
Everyone knew what that meant. And we knew a lot of the vulgar words in Italian. In those days, the St. Christopher medal was as big as your palm. Every Catholic had one hanging, you know, from the rear view mirror, uh, silver. My father would bring it inside the house first thing when he came home, so no one would steal it. He would put it on the china cabinet first thing as he comes in the house. In Greek, thief is kleftis. But then Greek communities also had their prejudicial terms for, say, black thief or Jewish thief. Say, for example, mavros, right, means black, or black thief. <laughs> Ovrios is Jewish thief. <laughs> I have a great respect for the Jews. They don't proselytize. In Judaism, there's no heaven and no hell, and I don't believe in embalming. I don't believe in embalming. It's just desecration. I do believe in the bar mitzvah. There is only boy or man. This teenage is a merchandising group. They invented after World War II so they could expand their market, gadgets and magazines, and soda pop. In my father's time, it was boys and men. In those days, they had discipline, which is caring. When the young don't have discipline, they have anger. We have this today to the nth degree. To me, there is no difference between Columbine and 9-11. It's just an excess of anger, <laughs> adolescents crying out for discipline. Now, Judaism has its faults. On Unfortunately, that's where Christianity took off from, Judaism's faults. And later, American politics grew out of Christianity's faults. And there you have the present day situation. That'll be $50. All the heroes since Christ have worn masks. <laughs> if Christ had worn a mask, they would not have been able to crucify him. In the 40s, the 50s, the heroes never killed anybody. The Lone Ranger would shoot the gun out of somebody's hand. Right? The shadow was able to cloud his enemy's mind so they couldn't see him. The Green Hornet used a gas that disabled the bad guy so he could make his getaway. Captain Marvel started as a crippled newsboy who walked down an empty subway tunnel and he saw the seven deadly sins painted on the walls, which at least had taught the children that avarice was a bad thing. I don't think God cares if we believe in him or not. Do you think he needs fans? I think he cares about how we're living. It's how we treat each other. 